Yes, 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 indeed, powerful people. This is another episode of Breaking the Machine. I'm your host, Samad the Poet, alongside my partner, Spank the Bank. What up, though? And today we'll be taking another incremental step and in shifting the culture. How you doing today, my brother? Man, I'm doing good, man. You know what I'm saying? I just left the gym, so I feel good. I feel real good. Still feel pumped. Yeah, man, working uh, with the fit guys, man. Yes, sir. How about you? How you feeling? Yeah, man, I got my workout in this morning. At like 11 a.m., so I'm feeling good as well. Feeling pumped. I'm in, in a Ooh, good flow. Fresh cut. So you got the fresh cut. Yeah, Fired man. Yeah. yeah. You I got know. a fresh cut too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, gonna yeah, cut yeah. my. I want to get the waves back, man. Yeah. I don't really like it. I don't know. I don't like my fro. Uh. I ain't been liking it. It's I'll, about that time. A lot of people like to get froze for like the winter. Winter, time, yeah. So, so you know. like around, I said around March, I'm gonna cut it. But man, I kind of want to cut it now. But I don't know. I'm gonna wait. I was looking up uh <laughs> this morning for like 20 minutes, trying to figure out because I'm going thin right here. I'm going thin in one of my corners. I'm like, man, I used wild growth before for the back of my head. So I'm trying to see mm. what wild growth help, you know, my my thin hair grow back. I think it might. I don't know. It, yeah. I just got to take better care of my hair as the mm. older I get. Yeah, man. It's a, it's, a, uh, it's a good season that we in. We in a very productive season, getting a lot of stuff done. Uh, some good stuff happened yesterday, man. Some good stuff mm. happened. Yeah. Lions, they won their first playoff yes, game. Sir. Yes, how sir. How many years was that? 30 Thirty years, yeah, thirty ninety one, yeah, so yeah, thirty two years, something like that. Yeah, man, man long time. Thank God, you know, we got that win. Kind of think of script though, only because, uh, man, I know a lot of people gonna love to hear that. I mean, man, listen, me knowing football, playing football, man, don't get me wrong, Lions play hell of a great offensive game. Mm. I just, I just feel like the Rams' offense was so explosive and so amazing. Mm. I really feel like they was holding back a little bit. Mm. Just a little bit, you know. Story sells. Mm. Matthew Stanford come back home. It looked like he had nerves in the beginning. Yeah. No, he did. It like, was loud in the bro. It looked like yeah. a Super Bowl game. I ain't gonna lie. Mm. It looked like a Super Bowl game. But I mean, I'm happy we won. But part of me like, man, uh, we did get away with that holding, that pass interference. We got. I mean, that was clear as day. But mm. hey, they cheated for us for years. You know what I'm saying? They cheated us <laughs> years. So you know, it feel good. But. That Rams offense looked it good, man. I ain't gonna lie, that's that's they looked it good, man. Mm. I would love to be in that offense. I mean, oh my God, Matthew Stanford. Um, I don't even know how to pronounce the Nakuka. Uh, I think that's no nah, name is name. I know he's number seventeen, but man, they 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 had an explosive offense, and the Lions well, they did greatest too as well. Mm. Jared Goff. Armin St. Brown, you know. Mm, since we was gone, uh, the, the Wolverines, they won the National Yeah, the Wolverines. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. It's hot in Detroit right now. I told yeah, you, baby. Yeah. It's hot, Go man. blue. Go blue. Go blue. You know, that's why I had yeah. that Michigan shirt on when uh, Brandon was up here. So, yeah. yeah, that was a good game, too, as well. I knew they was going to beat them. I knew, mm-hmm. that was, I knew that was coming. I knew mm-hmm. the offense was just – and their defensive line was just going to attack that game. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, sports is, you know, sports sports rule the world. City of champions. City of champions. It's crazy yes. how uh, a sports team can bring a whole – Community together That's mm. crazy to me That's crazy to me You see how they tore up Ann Arbor though Who Oh yeah The, the city Like the, yeah, the party Yeah, they, was, yeah. I don't, I, I yeah they tore that <laughs> They was knocking down Stop signs And all that stuff mm. I'm like damn it, it ain't that big of a deal I mean it is though But yeah. <laughs> They be going crazy Second most educated city In America Michigan uh, Ann Arbor Oh Ann Arbor Wow Next to uh, Silicon Valley Wow Yeah I mean I ain't gonna lie Getting a degree from Michigan Is big yeah, it's real big. Like that's a big accomplishment. Um, I know Wayne State. Is, I think Wayne State is one of the top mm. medical schools mm. as well in in in, in America. Mm. I ain't know Michigan was number two. Wow, mm. that makes sense. That yeah, most sense. educated cities in America. Yeah, wow. It's in Arbor. Two. In Arbor. Yeah. Wow. Number two, but it sounds like they know how to party, man. Yeah, they do. I've yeah, I, w- I wanted to get into the topics though. Uh. Yeah, we got a lot to talk about. I know you. We was talking the, uh, the other day about the Stephen A. Smith stuff. Yeah, man. C- kind of give me the breakdown on this, man, because I'm not really familiar. So, I, I did watch it. I did. I watched it. I, I you watched watch Stephen A. Smith, or you watch Jason Woodlock respond. I watched Stephen A. Smith. Okay. After I, I watched both. Okay. You know, I watched Stephen A. Smith rant. Okay. And man. There's a few things going on in the world of sports that need to be addressed. But on this particular day, they don't take precedent. Instead, one would be a fat bastard that has gotten away for far too long talking his bullshit. You want it some? Fine. I'm happy to give it to you, you piece of shit. The Stephen A. Smith show up next. I'm supposed to be covering sports, but I make a career out of talking about my colleagues. That ain't work. 
That's you finding some slick way to get a check because you can't get a job. That's Jason Whitlock. Now, I have sat back for years, at least nine to ten years, saying absolutely nothing about this man. I never uttered the words fat bastard out of my mouth until a few months ago. So that means that the previous nine years, you never heard me speak on him at all. But now it's necessary. Jamel Hill. Rob Parker. Chris Broussard. Skip Bayless. Yours truly. Along with a host of black folks all over this country. Every single one of them will confirm what the hell I'm saying about this piece of garbage. Damn. You go on for a whole hour dogging a man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it was very entertaining, but it was like, uh, mm. could, we, could we settle it? I don't know. I don't know. You know, I heard Jason. You know, Jason, they say Jason Woodlock is like an Uncle Tom. Uh, yeah, yeah, I heard that. Yeah, heard that before. yeah, he talks about a lot about uh, black people and and black sports. Yeah. Uh, so the beef was Jason. So Stephen A. Smith made a a a, a, a book, a men, what is it called? Uh, a memoir. A memoir. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he had made a memoir, and in the memoir, uh, basically saying, you know, he played basketball at Winston Salem, and um, he was on TV saying, hey, I scored one point, I scored one and a half game, and uh, Stephen A. was like. Well, that's a lie. Only played one game, you know. So, and I had a broken kneecap, so mm. only played one and a half. So Jason Whitlock, he just did his research, and you know, basically was like, "Well, hold on, you saying you only played one game, but I see on Winston Salem, this in 1991, there's a stat sheet that says Stephen Smith, who played nine games. You cannot average one and a half game if you only played one game." And I'm mm. like. Well, right, that's correct. One and a half points. Yeah, one and a half points. Yeah, my yeah, bad. Yeah. One and a half points. I don't know. I'm just all over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One and a half points. So, so let me back up. All right. So, 1991, uh, Jason Woodlock, he seen the stat which says Stephen A. Smith, and it says Stephen A. Smith played nine games. Mm. So he felt like Stephen A. Smith was lying because mm. he was like, you can't average one point, one and a half points a game if you only play one game. It's impossible. So mm. you have to play multiple games for that to average out to mm -hmm. one and a half points. <laughs> so he caught him on that And I know the, Excuse me And just You know Just years of always Picking at him You know what I'm saying Like Shannon Sharp Don't like him uh, They just feel like uh, He just a You know Like they said A fat bastard That just talk And don't really know Anything about mm -hmm. sports So um, Just 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 looking at it I mean Like I said He called him a devil I think that was that was, That's kind of pushing it Especially you know Because Stephen A. Smith Also said You know I called my pastor You know and I told him what I'm about to do. But it's like, uh, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Damn, you. Is your pastor going to check you for calling another man the devil? That's now that's that's deep. Other people can be devils. They man. can. They can. They can. They yeah. can. They can. I, I, they can. They can. But it just, I, don't, I disagree with it. I disagree mm -hmm. with it. I disagree with what he did. Just off of, I know I, if I done something like that and I look back at myself, I would be very upset. Mm. And my character of, of showing out like that for a whole hour. Yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree. I also think there's a flip side to it. Yeah. Um, you know, once you're at that level, as a man, once you get to that level of status, it kind of emasculates you. I mean, what you going to do? You're going to pull up and beat his ass? I mean, y'all worth millions of dollars. You I can't. No, nah, but we can. I can call you on the phone. Uh, I, I can call you on the phone or I'm going to see you. And then what? We talk. And Most then, nine, nine now, what if he disrespects you to, to your face? Okay, then we might we buckle down, but it's and then that's a million dollar lawsuit. Yeah, you right. So he like, man, all right. If I can't put my hands on you, I'm gonna let you get it. Like I'm, I'm gonna give it to you in the rawest way, <sighs> just to vent off some of this anger. I'm not saying it's right because I don't agree with but it. But he can't. But why cannot? <clears throat> also, I could sue you for defamation of character. You, you destroying my character. You calling me the devil, and it's. It's evidence that you're saying this. That's another lawsuit. I don't know if that's a defamation of character because he didn't really say anything about his character. You you called him a devil. What, that's a character. That's you call him. You call well, me a fat that, bastard. That, that, that is a character. Fat bastard. That that's like a descriptive thing. I don't know if that's defamation of but, character. But that you fuck that's with like my a, character though. That, I don't know. That's that's like saying you do something 
that you don't do. I feel like that's a defamation of character. Saying you do things that you don't do. But just like criticizing how it you could look. Be, I mean, it could be anything. Uh, I don't know. See, I'm not really studied up on defamation of character. No, I'm just saying, you could, you could really be anything, whatever you wanted to make it. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that that statement is broad. Like, the definitely, you know, it's definitely fraud. I mean, uh, not fraud, but uh, broad. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, I don't know. I just, I just, yeah, Stephen A lost me on that one. Mm-hmm. He lost me on that one. Yeah, I, I understood where he was coming from just watching it. Uh, I, I don't think it was the best approach. I just think he kind of let the emotions get the best of him. I mean, it sounded like he'd been dealing with it for years. Yeah, they said, and, uh, you know, said man ain't emotional. Who, they, uh, I just read an article said, and we say men aren't, aren't emotional. Mm. I mean, they talk about Cap, you know, Cap Williams, Aaron Rodgers said something, Stephen A. Smith. Mm-hmm. I mean, you are seeing a lot of men out here having these emotional rants, mm-hmm. you know, so we <laughs> We are emotional. I mean, it's it's become yeah. a, it's it, it's a rise of uh, a lot of people want a masculine man. That's what they want. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They, they they so now it's become a rise for the desire for that because a lot of men have become emasculated in a way. So now it's just like when you have the Pat McAfee's and you got these people who yeah, are Pat out here and doing their thing. It's just like I like him because he doesn't apologize or he doesn't he you know he has a no bullshit approach like he just it's straight you know straight with no chasers so a lot of people like that a lot of people like what Stephen A. Smith did because he came at him raw and it's just like man not doing that anymore you know I was watching some content I've been watching some content by this one dude all day I think his name's Andy Elliott or something like that I, I believe his name I heard of that name I was gonna I, think of the face I believe his name he's like a bald head white guy uh, super Jack Andy Elliott. Oh and my he's god, like, he's like he's like a training about. coach. Like, I know bro, you're talking about. Oh, this, Andy, that's my guy, bro. This he said dude. you gotta have sex. You're supposed to have sex uh, four times a day or six times a week. <laughs> yeah, he was saying something like that, and also he talked about how he uh, his wife Woo. hated him or something. He worked out for four hours, something like that. Yeah, I got his book. I just bought his sales book. Andy Elliott, bro. I, I, I didn't see all that, but that's intense. Like, yeah, yeah. I just was seeing videos of him like doing Hardcore. like, yeah. I was just seeing him doing training seminars with other dudes. Like, he had, he talk, he was talking about this one thing, and he was like, uh, yeah. So I go in the house and I just I make myself at home and I just you know get everybody involved and I, I'm just really relaxing myself. So he's like, I go in the house and I'm like, hey man, how are you guys doing, man? You got a beautiful house here. Um, yeah. So we, we can sit down and we can have the meeting in the living room. Oh, how you doing, bud? And he's like, okay. Did anybody? Want some water? Where, where, where's the glasses at? And he's like, No, 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 sit down. I'm gonna take care of you guys. Where's the glasses? I'm pouring the water. And then one of the dudes in the sales seminar was like, You do that in every house? And he's like, Yeah, I do that in every house. He's like, He said, He said, Dude, dude, stay with me right now. Stay with me right. Why did your mind just go there? Why did your mind just go to how is that not possible to do that every single time? He said, I for- And then he said, So I forgot what the fuck he said. He's like, uh, I can't. Did you see? Did you see the one where he talks about uh, from a scale of one to ten? How is your sales? How is your sales uh, approach? Mm. I saw him do a lot of like rating people's sales approach and just like sitting there and, and just seeing if they could like pitch him yeah. an idea. But he was like at the end of what he said, he was like, "Shut the fuck." He told the dude to shut the f up. Yeah. It was hilarious, man. It was hilarious. I'm like, bro, this dude is like hardcore, man. Yeah. You can tell he's just wired different, like. That's crazy. We talking about this early. I was gonna wait, but I uh, I was reading this book again, Winning by Tim Grover. Mm. And uh, last night I read a chapter. It said, uh, "Winning isn't heartless, but you'll use, but you'll use your heart less." Mm. So, uh, I'm trying to think. wow, yeah, I'm trying to think. I was. Part? It's crazy because at the beginning of the show, I was about to ask you, man. I want to do a new segment called like Quote of the Day. So that's mm. a good quote. Yeah, it is, and, it, and it's so crazy. This chapter is. Mm. Like it starts off. What's your definition of a great teammate? Supportive, commitment, uh, dedicated, responsible. Mm. How about these? Humble, willing to play any role, positive attitude. Mm. Those are excellent traits. Absolutely, you need those. You need those teammates. Now you know. Then he talks about. Now here is a slight difference. Take from Kobe in an interview about being a teammate. Mm. You know, if you're going to lollygag through this scrimmage, through this drill, I'm going to beat you. I'm going mm. to let you know I beat you, and I'm going to know you. Uh. And I'm going, and I'm going to want you to uh, recognize your professional life choice. And for the most part, people will say that doesn't make a great teammate. Well, I'm not here to be a great teammate. I'm here to help you with win championships. So that's like one thing Kobe said. But one thing I really like out of this, it was um, if you want the actual formula, it looks like this: mind over feelings. Mm-hmm. So basically, feel free to use that. You know, basically, he's saying. Um, Coaches shouldn't tell their players 
you know, I need emotion. I don't, I don't, I need emotion. Go out there and play with emotion. Mm-hmm. And he was like, that's not a good way to go play because now you're out there, you know, playing with anger. And mm-hmm. if you're playing with anger, you're out of control. He's basically saying, go out there and play with energy. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a better way to 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 use it instead of emotion. That makes sense because I just hooped a couple weeks ago and I played off emotion and it went very left. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And after reading this chapter, it made me like realize a lot of things in life. Why I'm, why I'm so behind on things because I let my emotions take over my my decisions. You know, I, mm-hmm. I acted so many, I did so many things off emotions and not just sitting back and just, okay, I feel like that, but don't act off that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like I'm realizing that, like now going slowly going to my thirties the next two years, it's like, all right, my twenties, these last four years, it was all, it was an emotional wreck. Mm. 2020 to now it's been, it's been an emotional wreck I've been on an emotional wreck mm. You know Just in my own head Beating up my own self Thinking I can't do it Or Thinking I don't Like uh, me and my boy Ray Was talking about how We were scared to be successful Just because We don't want to hurt people around us You know what I'm saying Like little shit like that But realizing Like I'm hurting myself more You know So These last four years Been to me more of an emotional wreck And it's like Getting back to you control. said you're scared of success because you're scared to hurt people around you. No, not hurt people around me, but like leave. You know what I'm saying? Like because yeah. sometimes you success, you boom. yeah, 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 yeah. But you know it. it that's to me. That's a weak mindset to have. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, I don't. Yeah, I don't it is. Know. It is. It is. It's a bad. Mind. I don't know if it's, it's weak, weak, but it, it, it I would say it definitely is not a productive mindset. Yeah, it's not a productive yeah. mindset at all. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. say weak. That's better yeah. for me. Yeah. Um, just it just is because then. Yeah. Really, you being successful help. Really, me being successful help me help people around me. Yeah. Me not being successful doesn't help people around me. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, like, Myron Golden has a whole seminar on that on his YouTube channel that me and my boy was just watching. You know, and how it's like, all right, yeah, bro, we got we got to stop worrying about basically what other people are saying and mm-hmm. other people's opinions. But yeah, these last four years for me been you know I've been using too much of my heart. Now I'm like, all right, I need to use my heart less. You know, mm-hmm. and just just stay locked in. Yeah, man, I I think uh, I think a lot of that stuff is something we all deal with. That's why, I, you know, it's like some things is like natural, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like fear and all this other stuff. So that's why I said productive, not productive. Because, you know, fear is, is a natural thing, but at the end it of is. the day, it's either going to be productive. It's not going to be productive, you know. Uh, it just depending on how we use it. But I, I definitely get that, bro. Just, uh, you know, feel like you're capping yourself because you want to – you know, you, you want to be more available for certain people. Mm. But you got to understand me. That's the biggest thing in life. It, it, at this phase, when you're pursuing something, it's understanding. You got to mm. understand who I am. And it's it's what you talked about the last episode. I come in, I'll let you know what what I'm about in my mission. Mm. And, and uh, another thing about it is it's just like <clears throat> I was talking to a brother the other day, and he was talking about, like, it might have been you. And it was to, uh, it, it, a man in his mission, or I don't know, it, it might be, I'm not sure, but I'll be talking to so many people. Uh, but it's just about the importance of, um, yeah, yeah, it was a different conversation. But it's like your woman needs you to have a mission mm-hmm. for her to follow you because at the end of the day, her trust in you is only as big as your mission, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying, and your commitment to your mission. So when she sees you not being committed to your mission, she she associates that with your commitment to her. Mm. She's like, dang, this is how he's committed to things, man. And I'm supposed to be his top priority. This, this is supposed to be his top thing. This is his purpose. And he's not committed to that. But he tell me I'm the top. Like, this is how he treats his top. This is how he treats the thing that's the number one in his life. It's like you, every, hey, bro, hey, when, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to success, in my opinion, everything matters. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just listening to Andy Elliott, like, listening to what he talks about leaders. And being a leader and, and how it starts from the top down and, and just the mindset, you know what I'm saying? And it make me think, like, dang, what can I do better? You know what I'm saying? For whoever, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to lead by example. Yeah. Like, you got to eat last. Like, you got to, like, I, I, bro, I was just reflecting on the other day. Like, man, even with my little brother, like, just like, man, because I be trying to help him with investing and stuff. It's like, man, if I get some money, I got to give him some money. You know what I'm saying? Just to let him know, like, I appreciate him. You know what I'm saying? Before I break myself, I got to break him up. Like, all these different things, man. But the biggest thing is, like, how you do how you do um, anything is how you do everything. And I, that's a quote. That, that'd that be my quote of the day. Mm-hmm. I don't know who said that, but I love that quote. Yeah. How you do anything mm-hmm. is how you do everything. Yeah, one of my mentors, you said all the time. Uh, because Tyler it's Johnson. real. No, it is. 
Prince Donnell said that too a couple of times. Yeah, it's real. But and I, I feel like people won't understand you though. Mm. They're not, uh, and nobody gonna understand why you uh drive from Flint to here. Mm. They're not gonna understand that. Mm. They will not understand. Like, why do we do that? Just understand that you don't understand. Yeah, I mean, they're not gonna understand. I and mean, make peace with it. I, I just need you to make yeah. peace with it, man. Some motherfucker. Can you make peace with something you don't understand? Can I? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I believe you can. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I know everyone around me won't. Mm. Like, well, why is you doing that? Why are you going through all this? I mean, shit, you ain't gonna understand it until really the success come. Mm. You know, a lot of people ain't gonna understand you right now. Mm. Like, that's one thing I'm learning too. Like, man, ain't nobody gonna really understand you. I got people I don't understand. Mm. You know, and it's out of, you know, it's like, and I'm at peace with it, but I'm like, yeah. why they do that? Yeah. You know, I don't get it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like ain't nobody really gonna understand you yet. That just, that I feel like a lot of people in my life understand me. And per- perhaps it's just my perception. Mm. Perhaps I'm just wrong. Like, yeah, they understand this and, they, and secretly they mad at me. But it's just like, I feel like people get it. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, for a while I, I didn't. You know what I'm saying? Because like, I, I can be distant or I can not reach out to people for a long time. But it's it's not that it's no love or different thing. It's just I'm locked in. Right, right. Every day it's about... Progression and growth, and it's not no mechanical stuff like, man, work hard and grind and put it like it's not that. It's just like, if you love me, you should want the best for me. If you love me, you should you should want to find me working. Yeah. If you love me, you should want to find me in my purpose and in my passion. And when you know I'm not with you, you should know that that's where I'll be found, doing the things that I love, doing the things that make me come alive. And that shouldn't bother you if you really love me. You know what I'm saying? If you really love me. Finding me in my purpose should put a smile on your face like, oh, yeah, I know where he's at. I know what he's doing. Like, he's doing that. He's doing that thing that makes him come alive. Like, and I feel like that is the part of that understanding. We got to have that connection, that understanding. You know what I'm saying? Like, even me just going out of town, you know what I'm saying, for, 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 the, for the retreat and, and building and working and different things like that. I don't feel like my mom understand half the stuff I do or a lot of people around me understand half the things I do. But it's just like... You just understand that this is just what I'm doing. Like, yeah. hey, that's what he's doing. I don't. Uh, my mom don't even understand this podcast. I don't believe. You know what I'm saying? But she just let me do what I do. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I don't know if they can understand. I don't know, but they just got to make peace with it. But I, I think it's good if you can understand it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Like uh, people that's going on that same journey with you, or understand, or not even going on a journey that's grinding, that's trying to get success, understands. Mm. But people that just waiting. They won't understand. Do you feel like it's that's an excuse we give ourselves to not fully go, or is that a real thing? What, what is an excuse? Like how other people feel. Yeah, everybody, everybody, bro, everybody stopped by opinions. Mm. I mean, look at LeBron when he first started. That's really LeBron could have could have been the greatest ever. They, early in LeBron's career, critics and opinions mm. kind of like. Fucked up his game. You mm. know what I'm saying? If he, like, shut all that shit out, Brian would have won plenty of championships. I don't know if he fucked him up. I de- definitely the Mavericks series it fucked him up, but other than that, I can't really say the opinions messed him up. I read it in his book. Oh, okay. And winning by Tim Grover. Okay. <laughs> I mean, no, when I read it last night, it did make me look back about, damn, Brian probably could have had a couple, you know what I'm saying, in Cleveland and shit. But I, I mm. think... I mean, I feel like that's what a lot of athletes, mm. the media got to them and just fucked their whole game up. You see it all the time. That's that's really people, like, pe- people that's in media, when they get you, they kind of happy as fuck. They be like, yeah, I got this nigga off his game. That's why they dog you. That's why they talk shit about you. Yeah, he's he's a half-ass. He's a bus. They fuck niggas up. Mm. They fuck their game up. Now they ain't playing like they supposed to. He's a, oh, he's a fucking bus. So what do you feel like messes up your game where it's being hated or being loved? Of course being. Ooh, I don't know. I feel like if you, you can use hate to fuel you right. to be great, love can bring comfort. And also can bring nerves. N- nerves. You know what I'm saying? Because you got a standard now of greatness. I ain't going to say what you mean. I don't know. I ain't going to say. That's like, that's like you, you go to the championship every year and you don't make the championship this year. Now people disappointed in you. Oh you're yeah, a championship guy. Highs, yeah, highs and lows. I mean, uh, damn, LJ was just talking about that shit yesterday. Uh, like how winning and losing is a split second. Mm. Like when you lose, they hate you. Then that shit over with. Mm. Win, they love you. Then it's over with. Like it's like for a quick second. Then they, you know, 
I think once you start to realize that, like, all right, they, they stop talking about you, like, that two days afterwards, you can really get over the 24 hours of, of the lawsuit that you just took. Mm-hmm. You can pretty much get over it. You know what I'm saying? But I just feel like we throw around that word loosely. They never loved us if they can get over us like that. Uh, Yeah, I mean, of course. They never loved us, man. I mean, of course. I mean. They just love what we did. They yeah, didn't love, love what us. we do. Yeah, 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 you yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's the case. That, that's, that's society in general. That's the hard part for a man. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Because a lot of people love what we do, but they don't really love us. A lot of people love what we do, but they don't love us. Yeah. Yeah. So now it's like we got to constantly be incredible at what we do to keep feeling that love. Because uh, we ain't never been in a, a lot of men ain't never been in a world or a space or a paradigm where it's just like, they love a personality. They love, and that's why men they they like lessen the importance of personality and like More increase ego. ego, but performance. Like for a lot of men, it's not even about personality; it's about performance. So now the personality is so low. You know what I'm saying? And right. I ain't saying Andy Andy Elliott is is like, but you could tell he's intense, man. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He's he is. intense. I mean, he is, and you got to be a a mentally tough dude to mm. be, to be around him. Mm. You know what I'm saying Mentally yeah, tough yeah. And to understand What he's saying Yeah Cause it does seem like He coming at you And stuff yeah. like that But no he not But like to be around Them type of people Like damn I go back to LJ So on Wednesdays We in the basketball league We won a championship uh, Last season Like in December So we doing it again You know I'm like man Bro I ain't got my car right now mm. I'm making excuses mm. Cause really bro I, I ain't got no car I don't like doing shit mm-hmm. Like just be honest Cause I ain't got my own time Like right. So he He said bro Call me, bro. We a team, bro. I'll pick you up. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, stop mm-hmm. making excuses. Nigga, you on a podcast talking this shit. But in real life, nigga, I'm like, damn. Mm-hmm. I'm like. Yeah. <sighs> I'm like, all right, bro. All right, yeah. Come pick me up then tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah. just. One, I don't want to I don't want to ask niggas. Like, like, bro, all right, come get me, bro. You know what I'm saying? I don't be. That's just me. Like. Yeah. That's just the same me. way. Yeah, I'm just me, bro. That's just me. Ain't. But it, at the end of the day, I still got to show up for my team. Uh-huh. And that's when he made me realize, like, damn. No matter what you going through, bro, you still gotta show up. You still gotta go to the gym, nigga. You still gotta go to work. You still gotta, nigga, the show go on no matter what. I'm like, damn. He said you was gonna hoop. He said you gonna hoop. You gonna hoop? I'm like, yeah. I'm, like, I'm gonna hoop with you. You know what I'm saying? He's like, all right, nigga. Call one of us. We'll come grab you. We we'll in the baby. And taking that's nothing. You know, my daughter be with me. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I don't want to bring my daughter to the game. Sometimes I just, you know, I just want to go out there and just hoop and not look on the sidelines and you know mm. see what she get into. But he like, man, that's why I bring my daughter. You know what I'm saying? I bring my daughter there, you know, so she can play with your daughter. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, like, that, that <clears throat> I need, you need people like that in, in, in your corner or, like, around you. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Niggas, they ain't going to let you fall short or limit yourself. You know what I'm saying? Oh, nigga, call me, nigga. I'll come get you. You know what I'm saying? Most people would be like, man, this nigga. Most people can't take people. Most people can't take people being hard on them. But since my father was hard on me, it's kind of, it's real easy for me mm-hmm. to take that type of, that type of like talk or that type of criticism because I'm used to it. Like my dad was always hard on me, so like that shit really be easy for me to understand and take in. Mm-hmm. A lot of boys don't get that, you know. A lot of them don't. A lot of them don't. Yeah, it's important, man. I think it's 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 important to have people who call you out, like when when, and that's kind of what I asked Beck when he came on. Like, how do you know what somebody is giving they all and what somebody is just like, kind of like. Doing doing a little bit less than what the what what they maximum is. Like, how do you know the the difference? And it's just like, it's a blessing when somebody can look at you like, nah, bro, you got a you got a deeper a deeper bag in you. You know what I'm saying? Now you a dog, man. Like you you got something greater than than what you giving. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's the blessing of uh, I just think that's the blessing of uh, uh, just brotherhood, man, and just sisterhood, all that stuff. Like I, I believe it. You know what I'm saying? Like we had a conversation a, a couple weeks ago. You know what I'm saying? And, and it was powerful for me because it's just like for us to understand we just want the best for each other. You know right. what I'm saying? It, any disagreement we have, it ain't, it ain't about like <clears throat> nothing other than like I just want to see us win. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. I want to see you win. You know what I'm saying? When I talk about you and I be like, bro, I, I see you like being the next so-and-so. You know what I'm saying? I normally use DC Young Fly because yeah. he does a lot of different things. Right. But it's just like, bro, I see you being that next. And I really don't care what nobody else see. Like, I see you in that yeah, lane. I, I get that. I used to get that shit a lot, especially with, uh, with like Neon Wan D used to always tell me, bro, you, I see you doing all these big things. And uh, see, growing up, my life wasn't to be a star. Like, mm-hmm. I wanted to be a star, but, like, bro, really? 
I just wanted a, a wife and a family. Wow. Because that's all I, that's what I grew up on. You feel me? That's all I knew. But like me getting into acting and all that stuff, that shit was just natural to me because I, I used to play a lot. I used to imitate a lot. I used to play a lot. I used to talk to myself a lot. And I had a big ass imagination as a mm-hmm. child. And like I used to like really like watch a lot of Michael Jackson videos. So I always knew how to get a stage or how to entertain. Mm. That was just something that I was naturally. I never really saw myself taking it far, you know. Till now, like till really, I got around like my homeboys from, from college, and uh, but like, bro, I was in my mind, nigga. I go to college. I had that simple American dream. Not even American dream. I just had that shit. Nigga, I go to college, make some money. I got a wife and a family. Wife and a family, you know. Mm. I was at the crib. You if know you saying? had an ideal role, what would you feel like would be your most impactful role? In a, in a movie? Yeah. If you could have any role, what would you feel like would be the most impactful? Something that you could I want to be like the main. Uh, like, what type of... Go ahead, explain it again. Just impactful, just in terms of touching people, in terms of, like, really making, like, a, 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 a real impact. It could be with anything, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people made impact in different roles. I feel like American Gangster was an impactful Oh, yeah, role. I I like, like Ghost. Seven Pounds was an impactful role. I want to be like... I always say that, Ghost. That would be your the most yes. ideal role. Why? Oh, his... his Cas his charismatic, uh, the way he wore his suits, mm. the way he carried himself in in both rooms in in the, in the business room in the streets, you know he he was two different people. He literally was. He was James A. Praxer and he was Ghost, two different people. Mm-hmm. But if you fuck with him, you might get both. You you don't want to get Ghost. That's the mo- that's the one he hiding. That that's that that's the real killer. Like that's the one that's yeah. But James is you know hey how you doing. You know mm. what I'm saying? The club owner, like, it's just, I just love how you can just switch it on and off, you know, and how you just, man, how you carried yourself. I know a lot, of, it's sometimes you be like, damn, James, James say pressure, like, Ghost was a whole ass nigga in certain, certain episodes. I be like, all right. Mm. But, um, I don't know, man, the way he just carried himself, man, just, he really embodied that that character. Like, I, I still get pissed at it the, the way it ended. You know what I'm saying? Like, he died, like, it was so much. He could have went so much further. Like it's, mm-hmm. it, it's just that nigga was cold, bro. So, what would be your ideal story that you would tell? I don't, I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I that that's like I, I don't know. I, I had plenty of movies I thought of, but like uh, that's I don't know. That's a good question. Um, what do you feel like? There's a story that hasn't been told on the screen yet. That's a, a powerful, impactful story. Uh, I feel like. There been a lot, I feel like every story pretty much been told. Only story I thought about doing is a lot of big, stories ain't been told. Before. I feel like uh, uh, I feel like I want to do a story on David, King David from the Bible. If anything, I feel like that haven't been told. But in a you know in a, in a hood modern day type of, it ain't got to be hood. Well, it got to start from the hood, but he end up being like the king of the other other projects or something like that, or like not even like he changed his whole. You bring all the kids, all the people out of the projects up, whatever. Put them in a new neighborhood, whatever. You know, mm. I feel like King David would be a good, a good story, a mm. good movie. Mm. I like that. It would be a great movie. I like that. Good. Speaking of movies, uh, <clears throat> talking about King David, taking it back to the biblical sense. Have you seen that? Uh, the new movie, Color Purple. No, with Lakeith Stanfield. I saw it yesterday. That's why I'm like Lakeith surprised Stanfield. that I'm drawing a blank. Um, it's called Book of Clarence, yes, Book of Clarence. Have Man, you seen I want to watch it. I want to watch it. Uh, Man, whoo. And it's what they got the, uh, they like in the old times. Yeah, biblical times, man. If you haven't seen that movie, please go check that movie out. It's that good. is a phenomenal movie, in my humble opinion. I believe it. I mean, I could tell. And me. since I remember just now, make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe on this episode. If you are listening on YouTube and if you're on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please leave us a five star. Back to the show. Yeah, no, bro, that's an excellent movie, bro. Absolutely excellent movie, man. And I I think it might be a different perspective if you watch it from a Christian perspective because it deals with a lot of things with Christianity and stuff. So some people might be offended. Some people might absolutely love it. If it had to deal with the times of Prophet Muhammad, maybe I might feel offended. I might like, I don't know. It's it's in the theaters? Yeah, it's in the theaters I'm going to check it out. I'm 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 off tomorrow. Yeah. Another store uh, snoring. So I might might check that out tomorrow. Literally, I I might go try to check that out. Bro, that's good. I might see it again. Like, bro, I'm talking about that. That was a good movie. It was basically, it just it makes you think about so many different things in terms of like um, the story around the story. 
Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just make me think, like, imagine, like, you're the most, like, you have such an impactful story. You know what I'm saying? Imagine this, right? Imagine, imagine like, five years from now, you're the biggest actor in mm. Hollywood. You know what I'm saying? And everybody's just talking about, you know what I'm saying, Corey Davis, and everybody's talking about all this shit that you do. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, I'm like, no, nah, man, me and Spank, I mean, me and Corey, we used to be in a, in the studio together, you know what I'm saying? We used to drive up and get shit to eat. We used to do all this shit. Like, I might have a completely different story, smaller story to your bigger story. You know what I'm saying? It's like, bro, I knew him in a different... So that's basically what it is. It's like the story of Jesus, but it's not really the story. It's like the story of Jesus from a different angle, from a completely different person. From everybody that knew him before he yeah, got... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before he became... The, big, the, the, the Just like... Any other celebrity. But it's told from the uh, perspective of this dude, Clarence. Like, it's it's about Clarence's life. Uh-huh. And it just basically parallels Jesus' life. Like, I gotta Jesus, watch that. Jesus is just like this dude. Like, he's not Jesus. And he's not Jesus because Jesus, he's not what he is today. He's just this dude who's going around performing miracles. And there's, like, stories about him. They might see him in the street or something yeah. like this. Like, oh, yeah, that's Jesus of Nazareth. Like, that's, you know. Okay, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna check that out. Damn, I'm gonna check that out tomorrow, bro. Right? It's good, bro. Yeah, it's this quote it. in the movie, bro. It's on my phone, so I can't get to it right now. But it's this quote that happens. I believe the dude, bro. Jay Z, the producer of it, right? Jay Z, yeah, I yeah. believe so. It, the one actor from um, uh, BMF, the 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 the, 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 uh, the villain in BMF, Lamar, Lamar, the dude who plays him, he did an excellent job in that movie. And it was a certain part. It was this part in the movie where they try to kill this dude. I believe his name's Barakis, if I'm not mistaken. This this big, you know, African slave who's now been freed and stuff, and how he just sticks up to the Roman soldiers. And uh, I'm not gonna give it away because I really want people to watch it and enjoy it. But like, it was a powerful scene, just seeing like the black people persevere and then for them to stand up and just like the monologue that the brother gives. Um, at that part, I was just like, man, like, I'm to, yeah, I'm gonna check that out. I want to check it out tonight, bro. Like, whoo. I heard uh, a foreigner, some foreigner director, supposed to make a Jesus movie. And Jesus supposed to be black. Mm. Uh, in that movie, he was black. He was, uh, Jesus was black in that movie, mm. and he was a foreigner. The, the brother who made the movie was you probably okay, talking so about Booker Yeah, yeah, yeah. You probably yeah. talking about Booker Yeah, Clarence, that's why I want to watch it. Okay, yeah, I want to watch it. Uh, oh, I want to hear. Uh, critics on that movie Yeah I, that's I, I want to listen to the critics And see what they have to say Yeah I haven't heard them yet I, I, I saw the brother on 85 South Show Shout out to 85 South Show And he was talking about it But I didn't really uh, um, See no negative reactions I just heard them kind of talking about it. Like people in the Christian community Might not like that Because they kind of do a different Like you got to watch the movie to see it. But it's a genius storyline In terms of just showing like How an original story of somebody Can get screwed like misconstrued. Once you watch it, you'll be like, this is genius. Mm. That brother did a genius job. I recommend everybody go see that movie. That movie was, I, I recommend it. That movie was incredible, man. And, but it just really makes you think about the power of your story, you know what I'm saying? And the story of people around here, like, you know, there's people around here that's going to have a sub story of your larger story. Yeah, that's why I feel like, that's why you got to treat, treat people, people right. Treat people right, yes. Yeah. Woo. Somebody, man, man, that nigga did some house shit to me. Mm. Yeah, buddy. Mm. Yeah, buddy, that shit backfired like a motherfucker. So. Yeah, man, and then it goes back to the Stephen A. conversation, man. You got to treat people good because you never know who they gonna end up to be, man. Never know who people gonna end up to be. Oh, facts, facts. You never know the people, you know, the voices people might have. You know what I'm saying? And all like uh, um, the power people might collect. But I did want to ask you in closing, man. We was talking about this conversation of uh, welfare. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah. and we was talking about you know it. it could society operate without welfare? What's your thoughts? Mm. I'm I'm not asking that, that that's no, not no, the right no, question. No, that's, it, no, no, that's a great question. Could society operate if welfare dropped today? I know what society could operate without welfare, but what would be the effect if like tomorrow there was no welfare? Oh my god, motherfuckers gotta go to work. Yeah. I can't pimp, pimp the system like that no more. Um it'd be chaos. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be chaos There's a lot of people On welfare bro Yeah It's a lot of people Yeah It's a lot of people And uh You could tell by this Riding in different cities mm-hmm. Who on welfare Who really ain't mm. uh, But yeah it's, it's, it, it will <sighs> You know cause I think welfare Has a, a bad rep I do 
in a way. We had I remember in class in college we talked about this how mm. a girl knew her mother didn't work because she just wanted to be on welfare and we you know and I do kind of feel like people on welfare are kind of lazy. I don't want to you know say that because there are people that really need it, but there are people who just you know. But also it it, it is ours. That's a whole different conversation. A whole different conversation. I feel like we man we need a consumer law person on. Mm. You know, one of them type of brothers that be talking about uh, them sovereignty brothers because it, it, it it's it's uh that's deep. It's a deep conversation. It's a deep conversation. It's a deep ass conversation. That's a deep ass conversation. Um, because technically it is yours. The welfare, mm-hmm. it is yours. Te- technically, it is yours. Everyone should be on it. To be honest, I believe it could operate. I believe. Um I believe in order to initiate it, we would have to release some Lemonade. type of, some type of. Put a cap on it. No, no, no. In my opinion, you would have to release some type of um, what they call aid, and then you could drop it. It's like, yeah. all right, well, all the people who are on this, I'm going to give you X amount of resources, X amount of dollars. And now you have to fend for yourself. What you do with this money and how you grow it or whatever the case may be, how you survive after this money, these resources, is completely up to you. But the welfare system is done. I could see that being something that's realistic. But like you said, if it just dropped overnight, that's all out chaos. Yeah, it's chaos. But I do feel um, at the end of the day, there are some type of benefits to a society without welfare, to a society where, you know, people aren't depending, you know, depending on, on, on government, government assistance because then that means you get more of your check back. That means you can empower uh, yourself. I ain't gonna you lie know? though. I like government's assistance. If I, mm. me as an investor, mm. me as an investor, if I want Section Eight, I go get a house. I got all right. We got Section Eight. Boom. We put somebody that need it. Boom. I get paid by the government. I get my eight hundred dollars every month because the government paying it. So as an investor, I love that shit. I, I would never go broke because mm. I'm always got the government paying. For the the assistance. So say if I got four or five section eight houses, they all paying eight hundred dollars or paying half of whatever that person rent. I know that's an instant check just like that. This one guy named Tom Cruise. Uh that's how he got rich. He mm-hmm. got rich. He felt you rich off of section eight real estate. Yeah. And it's I also heard they're some of the hardest houses to maintain because they get messed up the worst. See, yeah, and that's and a, they call uh, some of the hardest financial investments. And that's a myth. They say uh from the pros that I listen to, they say it's a myth because they say you can stop all of that. It's all about how do, how you uh, run your uh, your tenants, how you check in your tenants. Just don't take anyone. You know what I'm saying? They said treat it, you know, treat it rightly. Just don't take anyone. And they said most time that's if that does happen, it's for like if that does happen, it's uh, normally like a, uh, I don't know that part. I don't know. I just know that. It's all about how you check in your tenants. You want to make sure you run the right tenant. You just don't want to get no bullshit ass tenant. Just put somebody in there. Yeah, I mean, I I, I definitely agree. I took a lot of real estate courses and I heard a lot of stuff about different section things eight. with Section Eight. You know what I'm saying? Man, saying? it's a lot. Of, I heard a lot of good things. I heard a lot of bad things. But I also heard a lot of good things in Section mm-hmm. Eight. Which to me, why wouldn't you just take government assistance? Mm-hmm. You know you're gonna get paid regardless. Mm-hmm. They gonna hit your account. So this makes sure you just get right, right, right tenants in. But there. all in all, you would say society it'd be better, worse, with or without. Uh, well, society would be worse without it. Mm. I think I'd be straight either if I ain't without it. You know, I'm mm-hmm. in my mind. I'm thinking, okay, you know, what's next? Mm. But yeah, it, it would be. What you think? I mean, um, <clears throat> I think for black people specifically. I feel like um, we've become dependent on welfare for a lot of things. I do feel like in order for us to get to a thriving state, we have to do away with that. And we got to go get some skills, man. Right. Uh, Plumbing, Mm. uh, electrician. Mm. Like, you know, Detroit has a program. They're funding like $100 million to go for Detroit Works and go uh, sign up and get a skill. Mm. I heard a lot of people not working. Uh, I, I've been hearing that so much. Like, uh, I talked to like people that you know the bus driver. Ain't nobody working. Nobody want to work. Our generation don't want to work. I talked to somebody, uh, another plumber. Yeah, nobody want to work. Nobody work. I'm like, damn, ain't nobody really working. Niggas mm-hmm. really. What is people really doing? You know, I. That's a. Cause I see it look like everybody me working, but they, they saying a lot of people not working. 
you know, I, the pandemic, you know, that, that that PUA money, they say, you know, kind of made everybody lazy. But, you know, I was also watching one podcast basically saying 2024, this year to take advantage of that shit, though. Niggas ain't working, you work harder. Mm-hmm. You know, that's how you, that's how you way you going to get to the top. Yeah, there's a lot of people not working. There's a lot of people working at the same time. Um, yeah, I definitely see a lot of people not working. I just think the uh, job market isn't attractive to this generation and the previous generations. Um, get a skill. The upcoming generations. Get a skill set, man. Uh, it's all about skill set. Skill set. Skills pay the bills. And that's mm-hmm. true. Skills pay the bills. Like, that's my message. Skills pay the bills. Like, I'm trying to sharpen up my skills, you know what I'm saying, as we speak. I'm about to go back to school and get, get another skill set. Like, yeah, but all in all, I guess the, the the biggest message is what I was trying to say is it's like it's exactly what you're saying. It's like um, welfare kind of caps what we want at, at a certain point. And a lot of people can get to a certain point where they're just like, you know, I'd rather just stay on it because, you know, free money is free money. But at the end of the day, it you just don't grow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't I mean, leave nothing. It like, just depends on where we want to go. You know what I'm saying? If we want to get to a, a state that where other – W- that cultures. we that we feel other cultures are on. It's just like all we right, well, we kind of just like uh, got to well, come together as a group. Like you actually, know, we got to venture into some other cultures are on it. They are, but I think it's more so about but they, being able to use your resources. No, like really, you can be on it. So this how I, this how I think mm-hmm. other cultures are on it because they live and they everything on their EIN number. They live as a business, so they report their person as they're not. Bringing any income, so since they're not living really under their, since they're living under their personal self, not living under their personal self, they're basically saying they're broke, but they're living under their EIN. They basically got everything under their business account, everything. They living through their business, so that's how they living. But they're writing that as they personal, they're social, as they're not getting anything. So that's how they getting it. That is one way. I I, I definitely know that's one way. That's one way, motherfucker. It's, it's, it's a system, bro. It's a it's a strategy. It's a skill. Like, that's a skill set yeah. you got to have. Like, that shit cold. Yeah. It's just about we got to learn that shit. That's all. That, we just got to learn the game. That's mm-hmm. really what it is. It's a it's a paper game. It's a numbers game. It's it's just learning the game, learning how to hide. You know what I'm saying? They, they cutting down on that right now with your LLC. You got to make sure you sign this uh this beneficial owner. Uh, This beneficial owner now. You got to uh, – basically, it's nothing big. Just basically putting out who owns the company – they just trying to stop money laundering. Money laundering. Money la- laundering. Damn, I'm saying it laundering. wrong. Yeah, laundering. I'm saying it wrong. Laundering, yeah. Yeah, laundering. They're just patient trying to like stop that and stuff yeah. like that. But bro, it's just about learning the system. Get some yeah. skills, you, man. You just drop some some other shit. No, like it ain't even no other shit. Like, bro, if you if you really pay attention to the other cultures, bro, they they living on businesses. That's how they're able to drive yeah. these Cadillac trucks yeah. and these big old trucks because that's a write off of if it's over six thousand pounds, you know. Yeah, I, I feel like a you lot of learn the game. Yeah, a lot of times, in my opinion, from what I know, uh sometimes we like over Overthink what they do to get their money, and it's way more simple, simpler the things that they do. They're no, just, they, 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 they right. They right do there. a lot of that, but a lot of a lot of other cultures and families that I know, like they do very simple things. Like well, they, they were already set up to have certain things. Like you know, what I'm saying they might inherited a house or inherited certain things. And if they didn't inherit it, they just know very simple saving practices and simple yeah. investing practices. Yeah. They know what to invest in. They have a family business. Like they, I don't know if they understand about the twenty thousand pound car loan. Then it's a tax write off if it's over this amount of pounds. Like I don't know if every family. I just said no. They, every family don't. They just understand a lot of simple things. I, I just, you know what I'm saying that I'm, we I'm don't thinking, understand. I'm thinking about the rich. Yeah, the wealthy. Yeah, mm, I'll be. I'll be Listen, them motherfuckers. Yeah, ain't know that I, shit. Yeah, some of them don't really know about that. You know, it, yeah. I, they, it is simple. You know, invest in this. You know, slow, 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 simple. But one thing I learned from Grant, Grant Cardone is you want that shit fast. Mm. You want your money fast. Mm. You want that shit fast. I was Man. listening to this lecture by this lady. I cannot remember her name now. Please forgive me. But she was ter- talking about the difference between rich people and Henrys. What's Henry's? It, it, it stands for high earner, not rich yet. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Somebody who is making a lot of money but hasn't understand how to make that residual. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now you got a high paying job, but you don't know how to make it work for you. Yeah. So that that's what she said the wealthy call Henry's. 
You know what I'm saying? High earner, not rich yet. And then you have people who have wealth. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like a lot of these people who are in these families that, you know, seem wealthy, they just know a lot of simple practices, simple things. They don't invest in a lot of other things. And they just – and. I yeah, think credit's the biggest thing, but that's a whole nother no, conversation. No, credit, no, credit is the good, man. Yeah. Listen, get that credit right. Yeah. Go to Lawrence Hicks. Go to, go to M. Stacks. And them two people, man, I've definitely been rocking with. And hit up with Spank my the Bank for all your credit needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Certified credit preparer. Yeah, tax. Tax preparer. Tax preparer, my bad. Yeah, certified tax, tax preparer. All tax needs, not credit all needs. Tax, tax needs. Tax needs. Credit will be coming with that. But not right now. But no, like man, in due time, in due time. But like learning credit through uh this financial university, university I'm in, I got a meeting right now. I missed it, but uh, it taught me a lot, man. Credit, there's so much that you can do with credit, bro. What's your message for the people? Where do you want to lead them with on this episode? What, what be um, your message uh, my people? message would be uh, what I read in this book, man. You know what I'm saying? Winning isn't heartless. Winning mm. isn't heartless, mm -hmm. but you will use. Your heart less, but you'll use your heart less. All right, winning isn't heartless, but you'll use it. You'll use your heart less. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, mind over feelings, man. Mm. That's my shit, man. That's my shit. This mind over feelings. Mm. I know you feel like doing that shit. I know you feel like eating that cupcake, but don't do it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's my message, man. Man, don't feel like. Uh don't be afraid of what you don't know. I think that's been something that I've been working on a lot lately, yeah, just yeah. trying to be comfortable with a lot of things that I don't know. Something that's very difficult for me oftentimes is to listen to people talk about all the things that they didn't know about themselves in their younger years because it's hard for me to hear that because it's just like, dang, I wonder what I don't know about myself. But oftentimes I find that I'm aware of things before I know them. You know what I'm saying? And the only way I can know something is when my awareness is tested and then I know. You know what I'm saying? But oftentimes, I've been aware of, of, of the things that I know about myself. Like, man, I already knew I didn't want that. I just had to try to fully know. Like, yeah, now I know what what I was thinking was correct. So don't be afraid of learning yourself and discovering yourself. Oftentimes, you're not really discovering things. You're really just affirming things that you already were aware of, but now that you know. So, you know, don't be afraid to to just step into that, man. But this has been another episode of Breaking the Machine, man. Make sure y'all tune in next week for another episode, man. We love y'all. Appreciate all the support. I've been appreciating all the likes and comments, especially on the latest episodes, man. I really appreciate y'all from the bottom of my heart. Like, I see all of that. Like, every last one of them. And I appreciate everybody who makes it to the end of these episodes, man. I love y'all from the bottom of my heart, man. It's Ahmad the Poet. It's Spank the Bank. This is Breaking the Machine, late night edition. And that's a wrap. You dig? You dig.